It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right, Brian, we've talked about the 20s and how you get behind, how you can catch up. We've done the 30s, how you get behind, how you catch up. 40s. This is a really interesting, unique, unique decade because there are some stereotypes that exist around this decade, some things that take place in this decade. And I think those things often are uh, results or symptoms of people getting behind. So why do people get behind in their 40s? First of all, it's not over. You still have opportunity. Mm -hmm. You still have growth. There's still plenty of time on the clock for you to make things happen. But I do think if you are in your 40s and you don't have a decent foundation underneath you, you probably more than likely a rudderless ship, mm-hmm. you know. And, and look, I'm going to say it's either lack of attention or planning, because that can happen. You know, you had a good time in your 20s and 30s, um, so you, you, it's time to wake up and realize mm-hmm. you've got to get to work. Um, but there's also things that happen in life. Sure. Sometimes it's not just the rudderless ship. Sometimes there's career changes, and then even scary. And I'm old enough now. I've been married long enough now. I've seen this all around me. Divorce can be be devastating to you financially. I mean, we have seen in the research shows that those divorce, going through divorce, experience a 77% drop in wealth. And I think what's really interesting is those who experience a divorce, it's been cited. They often start seeing a drop in wealth four years prior to the divorce actually taking place. So when these life things start happening to you or start happening in your life, it's not uncommon for your finances to falter, for your finances to be impacted in a major, major way because these other extenuating life circumstances. So uh, like I said, I like staying positive. I'm a natural optimist. I want to talk about what do we do to catch up? How do we How do we direct these 40-somethings to say, hey, Okay, yeah, maybe life hasn't done everything. I'm not exactly where I wanted to be in my career. Maybe I had a marriage that didn't work out. But enough with that. I'm, I'm more of an optimist myself. What do I do to get myself back on track? Yeah, here's the big idea. You have to focus on those things that you can control. You can't go back in time. You can't right the wrongs of the past. You can't go back and save more. All you can focus on is what you can do today and what you can do from today moving forward. And when it comes to financial matters, you often have a sort of binary decision. You have two things you can do to really impact your financial well-being. You can either spend less money, cut back, or go out and make more money, increase your income. Those are really the two big options that you have. Yeah, and I want to kind of go a little deeper into each of those. Spending less, because I think you do have to isolate what you control. I think so much of Americans out there, we focus on all the stuff we can't control, whereas this is time to get hyper-serious about this. First thing, spending. I do want you, if you have never created a budget, Mm -hmm. go do the budget. And try to squeeze as much as you can out of just living off of less so you can put that money to work. Because you are in somewhat of a catch-up mode right now. So Mm -hmm. go ahead and prioritize that. And look... It's not in the show notes right here, but I think it's important to tell 40-somethings. We have a new course out called Know Your Number. I want you right now to go consider checking out learn.moneyguy.com because you do need to know exactly where you are in this process. But spending less... That's the first place you go, but you will run into limits on that. So if you, because you you can't spend it down to zero, you can't just say, well, I'm living off of zero. So you will run There's into limits. There's going to be some baseline. So, but what the, what doesn't have a limit on it is how much money you can mm-hmm. make. So I think it is a hard a point in your 40s that you're kind of at that last stage where you, can, so you take a really hard inventory, especially if you're in your early 40s, because it's kind of that last stop and say. What am I doing? Am I purposeful? Am I maximizing my aptitudes and talents? This is a good time to focus on how do I make more money and making it work for me. And the other thing you can do in your 40s is you can refocus on the why. Are the decisions that I'm making moving me towards my ultimate goal? If my goal is financial independence, is to be able to retire, is to be able to leave the workforce, did the vacation home move me towards that? If my goal is to pay for my kids to go to college without student loans, did the luxury car allow me to better do that? And refocusing on 
What's the why behind the decisions that I'm making? And are these decisions actually moving me in the direction that I want to be going? Or are they actually serving as a roadblock to me actually getting to my final destination? And, and I think this will be important because we're about to show some purchase decisions that sure. can be reevaluated and, and readjusted where maybe you change, have a life-changing situation. But there's nothing it says here because the elements, we're going to show you how valuable your money, even in your 40s, has the potential to grow by through cost savings. But there's nothing that says you can't go work a side hustle or yep. a gig job because how often do I have an Uber driver – that tells me they are gainfully employed in a profession they enjoy, but they're just trying to either get kids through college yep. or turbocharge their retirement. So everything we're about to show you can also be applied to additional income you can earn. But, Bo, let's show just some big life decisions you can make and their huge impacts on your future yeah, self. And here's the hard one. If you are truly behind and there are goals you want to achieve and you're not on track to achieve them, sometimes we have to make difficult decisions. But those difficult decisions can have huge impacts. Look at this. What have you decided? Okay, I made the mistake. I bought the car that was too expensive. So I want to downsize. And I'm going to go from the luxury car that's worth $60,000. And instead, I'm going to go buy an affordable car at $30,000. And I'm 45 years old. That $30,000 difference at 45 has the ability to turn into $145,000 by the time you get to age 65. That one singular decision to say, you know what, I'm going to buy a car, I'm going to go purchase a car that's half as expensive as my current car, I'm going to take the proceeds from that, I'm going to go put those dollars to work for me, that decision by itself could be worth... Oh, almost $150,000. So we've also, we've been keeping the assumptions, assuming normal retirement, you sure. know, because there is another variable because we talked about you can either spend less money mm -hmm. so you have more in your budget to save and invest. You can either go make more money. There's also, you can change the assumptions sure. of your retirement, but there's nothing that says... Hey, a lot of people retire at age 65, but maybe I do a hybrid approach. Maybe mm -hmm. between 60 and 65 or 60 and 70, I'm going to work part-time or I'm going to extend it out. So we've actually, we created an illustration where we said, hey, what can 25% do for you? But instead of keeping the, the same retirement age of 65 like we normally do, we said, hey, what if you start at 25%, but maybe you didn't start investing until you're 40, 45, or even 49 Maybe you just need to change the year that you retire and you still could have a retirement. And again, the goal here is we want to replace 80% of our pre-retirement income. Well, if you start saving at 40, 25% of your gross, by 69, you'd be able to replace 80% of your retirement income. If at 49, you've not started saving at all and you start saving 25%, you can build enough to be able to replace 80% of your pre-retirement income by 78. The big question you have to answer is, what is the income that I'm trying to replace? What is my number? Again, we've said it a number of times. If you want to have a tool to help you figure out that number, to help you figure out when that age was, go check out learn.moneyguy.com. You can check out our Know Your Number course to figure out, even if you are late, even if you're behind the game, behind the eight ball in the game, it does not mean the game is over for you. You just need to figure out, okay, what's my new horizon line? What's the new finish line I'm working towards? Yeah, I mean, as I get closer to 50, the older I get, the younger everything seems. Sure. And I, and I think there's nothing wrong. Like a 40-something who starts gets really serious about this and says, maybe I can start, now I can start doing 25%. Mm -hmm. That just means I have to, I'm have i working until I'm 69. Yep. But, but there's nothing that says here that it's not a hybrid approach here. Maybe instead of saving 25, you're doing 30 or 35%. You can change these variables. I think it's, it's really more about what's your commitment level and have you gotten serious about making your money work as hard as you do with your back, your brains, and your hands.